be calling you a radical. So here it is. There's three studies out this week. Three. They're all verifying Kevin Blanche's work to a fine science. I mean, to a T. So 75 biologists working on this. It took them, you know, all these years to do what Kevin Blanche, one person did with no funding. How many millions of dollars did they get on this to come up and tell you exactly what Kevin Blanche told you 10, 12, 13 years ago. So the new well study coming out of Alaska on the humpbacks. And she writes, you know, it's 75 biologists participated in it. The humpback wells have collapsed 30%. Now remember, humpback wells were on the increase. 30% this decade. And then she puts the date. Guess where she draws the line? Oh yeah, you can't make it up. Just what Kevin Watch said, 2012. Now, you know, in science, this is called an uh, outlier. This is an acute event. Even Noah's calling it an uh, unusual mortality event. Oh. In science, we call these outliers. So, this is the third one out this week, verifying Kevin Lash. Now, in science, these are outliers. These are acute events. So as you read through her study, their study, 75 bollards, they say they starved to death, just like Kevin Blanche said all the way back then. I remember walking the coast of California and come up on a dead hunt back and, you know, Fukushima killed me on it. And this woman, oh, my God, Kevin Blanche, a biologist, by the way. And she's like, you're crazy. I said, what do you mean I'm crazy? She says, Radiation can't kill a 60,000 pound humpback whale. I says, I never said it did. I said it starved to death. As you know, I said that from the very beginning because, and then she goes on to write in her piece that, she goes on to write in her piece that causation was the blob. I'm the first guy on earth that was reporting the blob. The very first guy on earth that you can visit. What is the blob? What caused the blob? She doesn't finish the story, do they? They never do. They never do. What is the blob? The blob is ossification. What does ossification cause from? An acute event where the healthy species leaves. The plankton is wiped out. So when the plankton leaves in the ocean, we call it the soup, right? We call it the milk. Kevin watched the biology. We call it the milk, the cloud. I call it the soup. You know, the cloud. That's what the ocean. Remember, I'm reporting. Look at it; it looks clear, clean. So, what happens when the healthy milk, the soup, which is the plankton, all the microorganisms, gets wiped out in acute fashion? What moves in? <laughs> Scum, which is black acidification. Black. Oh, caused by the blood. Oh, okay, okay. In acute, uh, uh, just climate change. Okay, you're telling me the climate change started in 2012? Okay, that's, no, I don't think so. I think climate change has been going on for a while. And by the way, nuclear meltdowns are hot, hot. So again, this is all verifying. Now you think about when I hypothesize, these are full blown up melts, going to genocide. You know how radical that sound? How radical a thesis, of what the statistical probability that happening was? I mean, you could run regressionary models of statistical probability that happened was probably one thousandth of one percent in a reality situation over the spectrum of time. And I'm like, no, 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 these are full blown out. It's going to move in. It's going to happen quick. These are full blown out meltdowns. It took me a year and a half to convince one. Now, so there's three studies on this one here on the wells, verifying on the humpbacks. Thirty. Now we know the grazing is even more than that, much more than that, than verified. Again, in the Noah's only work, forget that. Throw that Noah number. I mean, well, you could not throw the Noah number, but the Noah work is so regurgitation of Kevin Blanche's work. It was my post ignorance army that counted all the freaking washed up wells. And it was us who was verifying it. Put back the tape, Your Honor. It was my tide pool work. I remember a biologist called, she says, my husband's a marine biologist at one of the major universities. I teach biology in high school. We used to think you were crazy. So me and my two children, my son and my daughter, teenage children, we decided to trace your, retrace your steps on your tide pool work because we thought you were full of it. We were going to prove you wrong. She says, we traced your ships. We says, 
I owe you such an incredible apology. She says, my uh, two grandkids have a poster of you with your hands up, no nukes poster on their wall that they made up. And they both want to be marine biologists because of you. And you were right. I owe you such an apology. A lot of people owe me an apology, but nobody's going to give it to me. You know, no, my, my funding's completely cut. I don't have any funding anymore. You know, I have a couple people, but I mean, talk about starvation, right? I mean, the greatest PhD probably in history, at least in semi-wise, of hand washing, has been done with really no money. While I'm in critical condition, full of cancer, and I don't even live on the coast. I mean, you think about it. I mean, it's, what a fucking story. So the three studies, the well study lays it out. I'll present all three of these studies, and all three of them, the temperature on the ocean. This new study saying such a radical, of course, they use my old, the old term. Guess what they use in the heat in the ocean study? Puzzled. <laughs> Scientists are mystified, they're baffled, they're stumped, they're curious, they're alarmed, they're puzzled, they're mystified. You know, we've been keeping the list. Guess where that thing as well as 1.25 degrees Fahrenheit in an acute radical fashion. You got it. Look at the date she puts on it, 2011. Okay, so there's these three studies that are all out. Every single one verifies my work, that this acute catastrophe happened in 2011. So we call those regression, or excuse me, we call those outliers, right? They're outliers. So, versus outright liars, which it just proves what life. Remember, they're cutting up the wells, and we'll get back to you. I mean, it's so obvious. So, in science, we hypothesize the, the, the knowledge, right? Kevin Wyatt hypothesized. This is a new energy. It's never happened before. Never happened in my act. Never happened in Chernobyl. Now, Chernobyl was one reactor, a graphite reactor that blew up. It blew up in 780,000 men too. They had no spent fuel pool because of the new reactor. Mayak, Three Mile Island was a partial meltdown of one reactor. Santa Susana, small reactor, blew up in the sand. It's nasty. These are horrible accidents. But there's never been full core meltdown, ever, and nothing done about it. I mean, 700,000, 80,000 men in tomb, Chernobyl, and it was beyond nasty, man. Fukushima, first time in human history, I said, these are three full core mountains. Eight spent fuel pools, 40 lots, including Mox fuel. There's, you're, this is, I'm shooting this video right here at the school where I used to teach, at the Wada School, who built those reactors. You're talking something. I was the guy here. I did the due diligence on these reactors. The GE, Mach 1, Mach 2, water boilers. I'm the guy that did the new diligence and freaking did all the work on what kind of an earthquake a shake could they handle. And the economics of this, they're so expensive and so outrageous. It was never about the money. I mean, talk about opportunity cast they stole from wind and solar, for whom the bell tolls. I mean, we're the number one school business in the country when I was doing this work. I proved that these spent fuel pools couldn't handle a 7.8, 7.9 earthquake shake. I proved that there's not a nuclear energy reactor on the face of the earth that can handle an eight point Richter scale earthquake. This was a nine. These were nines. A nine point earthquake. No, or no nuclear energy reactor on the face of the earth can handle a fucking nine. No one nuclear reactor on the face of the earth can handle an eight TikTok DM. Thank God we got sent up and shut down. So I knew it was on. I thought for sure that they'll send in the Navy that, well, how about the USS Reagan, all the work I did on there? They did send in a ship. They backed them out. I leaked out this situation room transcript. I had it all over. At the, I knew what was going on. It was just a big cover-up to protect the nuclear industry. Ask John Holbrook. Ask Ron Emanuel. Ask David Axel. Go ask freaking old Biden. I can't believe Biden has it because he hates all those guys now. He's gone off. It's just like the whole Putin thing when Obama Dumber got elected and he's just like, uh, Putin, Putin, well, I don't know what to do. Uh, here, here's the dossier. And he's handed over the dossier to Biden. So you deal with it. That's what he did on Fukushima. Here, I. He went on Jimmy Kimmel. Remember, he stood on the White House line exactly right now. 
St. Patrick's Day, right now, 13 years ago, Obama stood on the White House lawn and said, I want you to know what I know. Their scientists are telling us the plume is coming over us now. It's nothing harmful. No precautions are needed to be taken. It's not harmful. When he knew full well that was a lie, because Cheryl sent out the emails to Hillary, to Hummer, to everybody, her day. Nobody's even talked to Cheryl. I've tried. I've tried to talk to her. You know, I've talked to Allison McFarland. I talked to Gregory Jacko. He ran for me, head of the NRC. I talked to NATO Khan. I talked to all these politicians. The same time these emails are coming out saying, don't go outside. The plume is coming over us right now. It's radioactive. And don't take any chances. Take some iodine tablets. If you've been outside, wash your clothes, take a shower. Take no chance. Obama fully well knew that. And he was kind of like Saddam was saying that. They fully well not. I, I mean, I was in Vienna in those days. I mean, talking to Hans Lake, I mean, the peace activist, 9 11, 3 11. All my work. <laughs> so here we go. I knew right then and there, these were full blind. I did videos and I told, I warned the entire world. I mean, and then it's come out now, it's been proven that anybody who's using the word nuclear energy meltdown was being sequestered, was being peddled, was being hit, was being viciously attacked. I'm the only person on earth that was doing that. I warned the world. I warned the world. And they covered it up. So I went out and I says, okay, it's going to get cancer. Now remember, I got cancer in 2011. Out of nowhere, hit by a truck. I had three radio shows. I was everywhere. I went to the bone marrow transplant on 11, 11, 11. Just that fact alone. How compelling. So they went after me. They sequestered me. I mean, it's unbelievable what they did to my work. This is the greatest scientist in modern history. These are full blown out meltdowns. It's going to cause a heat dome over the Western United States. It's going to genocide the Pacific Ocean. It's going to cause a chain reaction. It's going to cause a starvation event. It's going to knock out the plankton. Big fish eat little fish. First, we'll go to the typhoon. Nobody believe me. I walked the whole coast. Prove to you. Hundreds of them. The only ones on Earth. The only ones on the face of the Earth. The absolute hardcore raw fluting in raw form. It had to be done that way. In order to be, you can't crop and chop your work. If you're going to be a real patient, you got to do the raw freaking data and just throw it out there. You cannot crop, and which I did. I knew that. I knew that. I mean, I was mentored and prepped at the very, the top university in the country. By the top. And then they stripped my degrees from me for doing this. That's an unarguable fact. I mean, I have so much credentials. I top one yin and a, but oh, I, you don't think I run people wrong here? This is the lot of school of freaking. The Wattis, yes, the CEO, gee, that Wattis, General Electric. You don't think I'd ruffle feathers around here? Oh, fuck. You know, like Semmelweis. It had to be done this way. What am I going to do? Put him into the J store, get my golden handcuffs, and then give me a freaking comfortability zenith of life, PhD, freaking tenured professor job? That's the last thing I wanted. No, I want to be a real professor and do the real work. This is the greatest PhD opportunity in the human history. I'm the only fucker took it. And all my work's being verified by all these. <laughs> I'm a butcher, what's a cow? I'm a baker, what's a cake? I'm a marine biologist in Alaska and Oregon, studying well, studying typo, what's Fukushima? So they're going to go all the way down the rabbit hole, every one of them. They're going to draw the line just like I said. Well, in science, we call that an outlier, right? We call that an outlier. First, you hypothesize the knowledge. These are full blown outliers. It's going to break the eco chain. It's going to cause a heat dump over the Western United States. Just again, look it up. The great Western North America heat dub, heat bubble. I'm the guy that named it before it happened. Did it happen? Yeah, just the greatest drought, 1,200 years. 2011. The well collapse, just like her work says, 2011, 2012. The freaking heating of the ocean, freaking thing, 2011. You know, you go every one of these. The tide pools, the starfish collapse, the sea star collapse, 2011, 2012. Every single fucking one of these. Those are outliers. And so you hypothesize the knowledge, then you just set out and you do the field work. Think about my work at Center Offer alone. Without my freaking work and my YouTube site and my cancer and my work, Center Offer never shuts down. So you do the field work. So you possibly, these are full blown out meltdowns. I knew they were full blown out. These are full blown out meltdowns. They're going to push this energy in the Pacific Ocean. It's going to break the eco chain. It's going to cause a heat source into the Pacific Ocean, unforeseen in the history of mankind. It's going to be the hottest substance. Livermore, California, bringing star powder. Remember, I used to work with Kamala Harris on the shutdown center center. She was the AG then. Her mother was the epidemiologist at Livermore. Livermore, go there. The, remember my protest there? Bringing star power to Earth. Oh, they brought star power to Earth. The sun can give you cancer from 94 million miles away. We don't even know what comes off that thing. You think you know what this is? 
You think you're going to run a guy? How do you? How can you gauge something you don't even know what it? You trying to tell me that new knowledge never comes to be? Well, that's not what science is. I, I'm not a theoretical physicist. I'm a biologist. Real biologists, we get to work and we prove the new knowledge. You, you're telling me that new elements don't appear. Well, then how did plutonium get here? How did Californium get here? How did Tennessee get here? here? How did, you know, all these different elements, Livermorium, they're all new. Plutonium, this is new. <laughs> I mean, it's so, it's obvious it's going across my face and all my work's going right there and nobody will use the F word. What, what did they really, what did they do? Come to all you guys and say, don't, we, you know, kiss the ring to the nuclear energy crime syndicate. Oh, bow to them. The nuclear energy emperors have no clothes. What are they, the, your God? Are we worshiping our God of nuclearism? The, the marine biologist community, the scientist community in the world? What are you worshiping the God of nuclearism? Don't say the word, I'll be struck down. I can fucking, holy Moses. What does it matter with you people? You're not going to finish the job. We can, it's an arguable now. My work is absolutely unarguable now. You know, gilded in gold, cast in gold. And everybody can run away from me because, you know, you're so, everybody's politically motivated, left, right. You know, it's just YouTube watch on YouTube. It's just the will. It's just fire. <laughs> That's all. I mean, I use my art background. I was a BIS student. I did fine art. I did finance at the number one school of business. And I did biology at the number one biology. I mean, did three of these marquee epic schools that I went to. You know, I've been at this my whole life. I'm a scholar. I mean, is it that crazy and that odd to see someone use art, use culture to call attention to this catastrophe for a scientist to work, operate? Them? No, it's not that freaking. I mean, come on. What am I supposed to do? Like I said, stay in the J store and be a comfortability in handcuff and write panty painter freaking articles like this and not finish. That's not science. That's not science. You're regurgitating someone else's work. That's Kevin Blanche's work. I'm the guy who hypothesized it. I'm the guy that did all the work, walking the coast of California with no money, sleeping in a sleeping bag, fucking dying of cancer. Fuck, I weighed 120 fucking pounds. I weighed 170. I mean, desecrated my body. Des I mean, it's literally desecrated what they did to me. Try to. I've had open heart surgery twice. I mean, I'm walking doing the type of work post attacked by teams of trolls while I'm in an ICU unit? You know, I put the videos up and all to show you my freaking chest. That's what a real science does. You freaking put out as, as much as raw data as you possibly can. That's what I did. I hypothesized this was going to be a new energy and it's going to break the chain. It's going to cause the great Pacific genocide, as I mean. Then you get out and you prove the work. 13 years of full work. 13 field, years of field work. As it happened, when the mirrors are freaking washed up dead, I'm walking right there, verifying. As the tide pools are dying and wasting, I'm verifying. As the wheels are starting, if I'm on the coast, verifying. I mean, doing the work in real time. In D.C., fighting with politicians. Right here in my own state, in state legislators, inside the Utah State House, fighting with legislators. You know, Interviewing politicians, what about folks you Mike Lee right there interviewed him, right there. Mitt Romney interviewed him right there. Yo, Donald Trump, I get right there. You gonna talk about folks? Yes. I feel like Seminoles. So these three studies verify my work right to a T. And they're using my dates right to a T. You know, it's 2024. I did this work in real time in 2020, 12, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, in real time, including to the day that it happened, the meltdowns. I knew. I knew that these cores no way could handle a dime. I was in the Nevada te uh, in the Energy Solutions dump site, you know, right now this time of year. Talk about March Madness. Protesting the Italian nuclear waste coming into Utah at the dump site. I got home and I saw it. I had a TV then. I saw it. It was us as live as activists had the live cam on there. I saw it and I'm like, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, so I like I knew right then. I heard I threw up a video, it took me like twelve hours up to that video. I had hundred thousand thirty thousand views when I went to bed. The next day I had eleven thousand. I knew right then they were on me. I mean, 
they had already circled the wagons. I'm sure my name got brought up a lot of times in freaking these classified hearings. I know for a fact they did. When they had the hearings, I, Barbara Boxer's office, her age and I were friends. She told me straight up my name came up. So they classified me down. How about my salmon work? How about my salmon? That was so crazy. People were like, you're out of your mind. Why it's good? We're seeing with eyes. They'll collapse in 2016. Chinook salmon. The Chinook salmon don't go to sea on average of five years. The, the still has started to collapse in 2011, 2012. So you hypothesize the knowledge. Then you do all this incredible historic freaking work that I did for 13 years. Then you defend your work against this tsunami. And they talk about holding back. Then if you're right, it becomes the new knowledge. The Great Pacific Genocide, which I need to prove Tony. The Great Pacific Genocide is... So now we have enough data. We have their well data, which is my well data. We have their starfish data, which is my starfish data. We have their salmon data, which is my salmon data. We have the heat dome and their drought, which is my salmon data. We have the plutonium fires, the fires, the, those events, which I predicted all to a T. We have all that data in symphony with each other, in symphony with each other. It's an ecology. So we could plug that data into a regressionary computer model, right? We could plug it into any model, and every single model you'll come up will come I'm sure that's what they did. It comes up with the outliner. This is the greatest outliner. Well, at least it's Krakatoa, four, the year 4816. 416 is when Krakatoa was formed. Blanketed the earth with freaking thing. I mean, it's the biggest outlier since then. We know for a fact the outlier is 2011. It's absolutely unarguable now. So the only thing we can do now, we got to search for the culprit. Again, I'm the guy that reported the blob. Fucking me and John Kirk up there at fucking Vancouver up there. And then me and Lori down there in SoCal. I'm like, you can physically see it. People are like, ha ha, what? And I'm the guy that's first trying to call it the blob. I get no credit for that. No credit for that. I mean, it's destroyed unbelievable fucking. It blows my mind. But I studied Semmelweis when I was young. I studied Spanish flu when I was young. And just the fact that Spanish flu was reported on March 11th, freaking COVID was started on March 11th, Fukushima had, I mean, all these things that I've had to keep in my mind and run this process. This is the new knowledge, which I call Fukutone. You know, F.U. Fukutone. Remember I used to wear that arm? That's what it is. It's new. This is an acute, radical, and unusual mortality, man. Oh, my God. No, we call those outliers. Huh. So you can argue with me. 2011, we know unarguably factually in the Pacific Ocean and over the Western North American continent, we know that it was a radical, incredible, acute catastrophe. The outliers 2011. That's when it began and that's when it started. If it was climate change, you tell me climate change started in 2011? I don't think so. Climate change is very real, but I mean, Fukushima. Heat, hot, 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 hot. I mean, so what happened in 2011? Let's see. Meteor hit Earth. Did, say gosh. Did Krakatoa go off again? Even bigger this time? No. Meteor didn't hit. No. Did we have 9 million exile Valdez? No. Did we have for the first time in human history? Albert Einstein. Well, hell of a way to boil water. Kevin Lynch, hell of a way to boil a planet. Einstein, the anti nuclear that he was, he says, he was asked, you know, he was a big animals' rights guy, and he was asked about the animals. If we ever have a meltdown on one of these nuke reactors, we have a full blown up meltdown, will, what will happen? And he says, well, it will affect every, the biology of all the animals and the planets. He says, it, it, will, it will affect every piece of living thing on earth, every piece of biology on the planet. Well, what about humans? <laughs> humans are animals. It's this. Well, they adapt. Yes, in 50 generations. I never used the word extinct. I never used the word extinct because I don't believe it. I still don't. I used the word genocide. And that's exactly what it is. The great Pacific genocide, the greatest PhD in human history. So we know for a fact Oh God, look at this. That's my buddy doing right there. He'll be a star in the NBA. 
So he's the greatest PhD in human history in all three studies. We call those outliers. Three full court meltdowns, eight SMAP fuel pools, blown to smithereens. I knew for a fact from my work here at the Water School Business Fund, I was the guy here. What they did to me. You know, I could write a whole book what they did to me here. Because they wanted supply chain. We go from number one now, look it up. They're under an investigation by the FBI. I stood up to that. Where'd it get me? <laughs> Should have got me no money. Should have got me no credibility. Well, I'll tell you one thing I have that none of these people have because I finished the job. I did it the right way. I did it the old school way. I did it the old PhD way. First you apostolize, then you do the field work, then you defend your fucking work. Then if you're right, it becomes the new knowledge. I did it right. I have peace of mind. That's something that none of them have. So, all my work can be verified on a daily basis now. You have to identify the culprit. And when you do that, you do that early. You hypothesize the culprit. And so, the great Pacific Genocide. The greatest PhD in human history. I didn't want to be right. I really didn't, but in my heart of hearts, before it was ripped out, I don't have a pacemaker now. Both times, I knew I was right both times. <laughs> Kevin Blanche has rocked the scientific world. Oh boy, stay in tune.